to have you with us on this Wednesday evening. Hope you're keeping well. Tom English is going to join us on Wednesday Night Rugby. He's got a new book out. It covers the 1997 Lions Tour of South Africa. Obvious timing. Some amazing stuff in it on the South African side of things. We often get the Lions perspective for obvious reasons, but South African rugby between 95 and 97 was in turmoil in a way I hadn't fully appreciated. So Tom English on the way at 8 o'clock on that new book. The football show, we'll have David Snade with us. The Ireland game, obviously, tomorrow. Hard to think of an Ireland game there's been less talk of or less anticipation for than Andorra, 158th in the world against Ireland, 47th in the world. But it's on tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Will you be watching? 5-3-106. And uh, he's also been looking into the live score Champions League deal. So every game streamed on live score in Ireland for the next three years. Uh, plus this hour, John Gonzalez on Kiri Irving, racist allegations, fan unrest and the NBA playoffs effectively is what's uh, going on over there. 53106, the text number, add off the ball on Twitter. Richard McCormick, hello to you. Hey Joe. Will O'Callaghan, hello. Evening Richie, evening Joe. It's, it's, it's a ridiculous question I asked, will you be watching an Ireland game? I presume Richie, <laughs> we're still at a point where everyone, myself included, a Republic of Ireland international is absolutely still something I'll sit down and watch when it comes around. Yeah. I mightn't be looking forward to it three days out, but I'll be there. Yeah, sure. Look, I have to, I have to watch everything as much as I can well, do yeah. here, doing the job I do, kind of providing the, the bulletins and all that for the jet for the day and the and the website as well, OTV Source. But yeah, like it's hard to get excited about it. Like the, this, this is on a par with those warm up games that we'd heard of prior to say Euro 2012 uh, that essentially deprived Damien Duff of his 100th cap because there weren't proper officials assigned for it. Now, this is a fully assigned and fully accredited international and all that kind of thing, but. We're far away from the madding crowd of Euro 2020 by heading off to the Principality of Andorra to get a friendly under our belts, which is essentially just really an exercise in, in getting a win under Stephen Kenny's belt. I don't think we can make any bones about what's actually going on over the course of the next three, four days, both in uh, in Andorra particularly and then in Hungary on Tuesday. But it is an effort to just get a bit of confidence back flowing through this team, get a win under their belts and, and move on to the autumn when things really turn uh, up in terms of heat again with a little bit of uh, renewed confidence. Mm. Will, get a win, no disasters, get out of there and it's quickly forgotten. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially it. It kind of reminds me of the friendly internationals that we played, a couple of them against Oman, which are playing at Craven Cottage roughly this time of year as well. I think we played Nigeria there too. And we've had a couple of these kind of end of the season internationals. I can remember the USA at home when Declan Rice played and those kind of games, which had absolutely nothing on the line. And you just felt the players were getting ready for the summer because of the fact that there's been no win in the first 11 matches for Stephen Kenny. And the vast majority of this group have been around for those. There is that feeling that at least the monkey has to get off the back tomorrow, beat Andorra. And at least the narrative is no longer about the stretch of games without goals, the stretch of games without a win just get through it. And I would imagine that Hungary will probably be a tasty enough game at the weekend too. Probably a step up in standard rather than playing the 156th team in the world in Andorra. And yeah, I think if uh, they don't win, um, definitely again, people are going to be out for Stephen Kenny. These fixtures really shouldn't matter, but I was talking to him earlier from the base in Andorra and he admitted that the pressure, the pressure is ratcheting up purely because of the fact that they've gone over a year without a win at this stage. But he's confident. You know, there's young players who've come into the squad, but also returning players like John Egan, who for a variety of reasons missed quite a few internationals in recent times. And he's hoping that they can come together, gel after a prolonged period getting ready for this game and put a few goals past Andorra tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the reaction if there's a, a loss or even a draw, God, then it gets very messy indeed, doesn't it? So that's tomorrow. That's five o'clock. We'll chat to David Snade nice about it later Andorra. on. Yeah. A nice little Andorra line that Neil O'Reardon in the from the Sun pointed out earlier on today. Ildefonse Lima, who is a, a name that kind of resonates through Irish football because of that goal he scored at Lansdowne Road uh, over 20 years ago. And he's still going to be playing tomorrow. Like, this is incredible. He's going to have an international uh, tenure, essentially, according to Neil, that spans four decades. Oh. So this is what we're up against tomorrow. The great Ildefonse Lima playing in his fourth decade of uh, international football is still at the heart of all things Andorra. The other news today, curious for people's thoughts on it. I don't know what to make of it, really. I don't know if it's good, bad, indifferent. I guess it's good in that Champions League football remains free. So yep. I'm sure you've seen at this stage, Live Score, the app has announced a three-year deal running from next season through to 2024. In effect, they will show all 137 matches in the Champions League to Irish 
apps, phones, devices from group stages through to final. On the Tuesday nights, RTE have retained their rights to the first pick of 16 Tuesday night games. So RTE get first pick on those 16 Tuesday nights. That leaves at the moment Wednesday open. There are 16 Wednesday night matches available. I don't know who's going to swoop in there, I would presume. And I'm not talking with any inside knowledge here, by the way. But I would presume on the outside, Virgin might be eyeing them up or someone will be eyeing them up anyway. So there's 16 Wednesday night matches available still. BT Sport, if you're a BT Sport person, they still have all their matches. Their deal continues. So the one of the first questions I had was, would you be able to Chromecast this, for instance? So it seems you will be able to live score. I've confirmed that. They will be able to watch matches, obviously, on your phone, on your tablet but you will be able to Chromecast it. Certain apps you can't. Like I know if you're uh, streaming the Sky Go app, it, you, there's no Chromecast available. They don't let you because yeah. it's a whole, you know, it's a rights thing. Yeah. 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 But the, the live score one, they've done it before. I mean, they've had um, Serie A games previously and most recently on there. They've had uh, Portuguese Premier League games on there too. It, this isn't their first kind of uh, foot yeah. in the water as regards all this. Um, the concern would be, uh, because this is as all... Uh, live score apps are whether it's them or flash score or any others they're essentially bookies windows because if you go on to I was in a conversation with rory o'connor later on on, on twitter because okay. he pointed it out the frequency at which betting rears its head on these things and you know again uh, we obviously have a, a betting partner involved ourselves um but like you click i clicked on the for a randomness sake the first fixture was literally at the top of the list tonight was azerbaijan and belarus and if you wanted to, there are three different portals, I think, for betting companies uh, on the live score app to click through and bet on this game. Um, and I imagine things will be you know, ratcheted up a little bit more uh, come Champions League time because they want to obviously capture the market that's suddenly come swooping towards them almost out of nowhere. Mm. Um, but that would be the concern is that these things are so prevalent and to an audience that might not be suitable for it because, let's be honest, it is an over 18s pursuit. And uh, you don't want kids essentially tuning in to watch Kylian Mbappe or Erling Haaland or Cristiano Ronaldo and be bombarded with gambling ads. No, it's true. Though I guess the point is it's everywhere, isn't it? Those That same audience at the moment are seeing like Ray Winston doing I don't know how many ads during a half time. And, yeah. And as you said, look, we have a betting partner in the football show here. It'd be remiss of us not to mention that when we're talking about it. On the... Um, so like sorry not to move away from that that's definitely a significant concern if it's like betting non-stop that's not ideal on the 306 Serie A games that they've done that coverage wasn't available in Ireland was it not I, I don't remember yeah. ever being able yeah, to yeah. stream no, oh was, you, yeah. you could have yeah. streamed okay yeah they, were, they weren't to be fair now they would have if, say on your regular 3 o'clock Sunday list of matches and Serie A is still pretty much adhering to most of the games being on a Sunday mm. it wasn't your like if I'm trying to remember Will you can probably correct me here if I'm wrong it was usually not your top tier game. So you get like a, a Sassuolo versus Verona or something like that. You wouldn't get yeah. necessarily Juventus versus Napoli or Juventus versus Roma if that was they being played non, at the same time. Non-premier sport games were what they had yeah. when yeah. they took them on originally. Okay. So that was kind of the proper first dip in the water for right. both Live Score Bet and Virgin Bet when they came together as Live Score, when they went to acquire rights. What happened was the Serie A rights kind of drifted a little bit when BT Sport decided to drop it and Premier took up, I think, part of a package and the ones that weren't part of the package were then streamed on okay. betting websites and also on the Live Score and, app as well. Yeah. So this summer they've kind of, where they really pushed the boat out, Joe, with a feeling that I didn't think they'd get a white label product like the Champions League, but once they got substantial rights for the Liga NOS in Portugal for next year, they have 140 games in the year to VC in Holland as well. They've been moving in this direction really since Virgin Beck got involved with them back in 2017 when they started buying rights about 18 months ago. And, and like the Champions League then is the big step forward. Yeah. And do you know from, so they were available here, those ones. Did you ever yeah. flick into the coverage? I guess the, the point I'm getting at, the first two things I wondered were, yeah, can I Chromecast this to the TV? Very important. I can. And secondly, what will the coverage be like? Like you think we've, you know, our generation came through in the 90s when the coverage was just spectacularly awesome and that's kind of continued in many ways so I, my, my first thought was I don't really want to be watching Champions League games where there's no good pre-match build up and where half time is just the commentary team talking over a few replays and then just yeah. ads and then that's exactly no full time analysis gets, yeah. is that what we're getting for Champions League do we know well that's, that's what we have had for Serie A and for, for the, the Portuguese League okay. I would imagine like I, I can't speak but you know with, with that amount of money pumped into their rights you presume that they put a lot more bells and whistles 
around about it and that they will have, say, a featured game among those plethora that they'll have of a, of a Tuesday or Wednesday night across the two nights in the Champions League. Uh, it would be remiss of them not to do something like that. But for the rest of them, it would be a similar offering to what we've seen here before, whereby, you know, your uh, your third, your second game in, in, a, in a Group G where you're not really that interested yeah. in it would be, you know, straight streamed on one of the lesser channels and then, you know, it would be bare, bare bones. But I would say that they'll put a bit of money behind this in the same way that, uh, La Liga TV have kind of have, have done that uh, yeah. as regards their La Liga coverage work with Graham Hunter and go. Yeah, they'd have to really because it would just be I so kind of grim really if you're watching a big Champions League game and it was, you know, no halftime analysis. No, like the punditry is a part of it. For some people, I appreciate not for everyone. Jeez, Roddy Doyle was on the other night. He's like, couldn't be bothered <laughs> listening to anyone faffing on about the game. I just love the game. I want to watch the game. So I don't really care yeah. about the punditry. But I don't know. I think in Ireland probably because of that RTE panel in particular, there is a real kind of, not cherished spot, but there is a sense of importance placed on the panel and what they're saying on TV. It'd just be kind of sad to lose all that. Like, you know, Virgin pre-match the other night, it was, you know, it was great watching Tommy and Brian Kerr and Niall Quinn talking yeah. about the Man City team and like, God, what have, what has Pep done here? So that's the kind of other slight concern you'd have. Because I know um, with certain competitions, there are like production values and standards that are as part of the contract negotiations as the money. You know, X number of cameras covering a game and studio treatment and, and all of that kind of stuff. Like yeah. other competitions care about that. UEFA, market like Ireland, hard to know if they give a damn. There was an interesting yeah. point raised earlier on to me. Um, I think it was a KC Media who've been looking after, I'm just trying to find the tweet here, who've been looking after a lot of stuff for KSC Media who've been looking after stuff for um, Watch LOI. And they were asking, the interesting part of this whole thing is that if it will be classed as the host broadcaster, if Shamrock Rovers make it to the qualifying round of the Champions League, uh, so how would they deal with that aspect? It just means, uh, he says, James looks after this account, they'll have to set up everything for broadcast, something they're not used to. And it costs, I would say, they want a budget for like a couple of other broadcasters who've been in the same position. So that's an interesting wrinkle. Should Rovers get that far in the competition that we might have ourselves a bit of yeah. a contractual uh, grey area in terms of what's available and what's going to be broadcast. But as, as you mentioned there, that, that'll probably be covered by those 16 Wednesday night games that are still up for grabs um, and yeah. that are going to be the first picks. Look, I guess it's good it's free, you know. That was the, free, oh, free. That's, that's free is free, yeah. It's, it's yeah. one of these funny things. Connor texted in, live score, flash score, they're deadly little apps for highlights. So who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us next season. Maybe they will. It's one of these things like... I have live score. I never had any sense of like, does everybody have live score? Like I use live score all the time, but it's not like you're asking everyone in your world, do you have live score? What apps do what's you have on your phone? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what's your favorite live score app? Do I you, know. Do you get and I, like live score is great and you flick in and it gives you the teams as well and the lineups and, you know, works really well. Do you like, you both have live score, I presume, given the world we're working in. Yeah. Does everyone have flash, does it, does, flash score loyal right here? Right, guys. okay. Does everyone have live I, score or flash score? Does everyone, all the listeners, do you, does everyone have live score? Is it like this massively popular app? There's another couple of ones out there that def I'd seen people mention today. That, so there's, there's definitely three or four in the firmament that people have. Live yeah. score and flash score are the two biggest ones, but I'm a well flash score loyal. Uh, you're nothing without that big chance dot that pops up to let you know that a goal is about to be scored. And not necessarily has been scored. Right. I don't have flash score. Similar vibe to live score. Job. Yeah, yes, flash score went so, a bit yeah. more legit, Joe, in the last couple of years. There was a period where it they is. were definitely <laughs> dancing with the idea of using rights they shouldn't be, uh, where they were putting up clips that were uploaded um, by their team, which were probably filmed, I'd say, from a TV. And they slowly but surely started to take them out. So I wonder if Flash Score are possibly going to try and get into the same market okay. space okay. as Live Store are currently, because they started running commentaries which you had to sign up for on Flash Score, which I think was their first move towards potentially trying to get rights as well. But but look, it's intriguing, lads. You know, once upon a time it seemed impossible the idea that we were all out buying televisions and you know the consumer experience was that you wanted a cable subscription just to be able to flick a channel, mm. know exactly where the match is on a given night. Generally, we for a long time didn't go too far from free to air. And now, clearly, companies believe that there's going to be a market there for people to just go onto their phone and tablet and watch the game there. I wonder how interested Live Score will actually be in the casting experience of the TV, because they'll surely want most people to be on their phone where they'll also be going to other apps while they're actually watching the games. Right. I mean, do you both have Google Chrome? It's Google, isn't it? Do you, do you both have Chromecast? I have Chromecast. Uh, yeah, I have a Chromecast, but I don't use it. But I have okay. Apple TV at home, so that kind of doubles as, as that as kind it. of thing. So yeah. if you're looking on the 
on the phone or on the uh, laptop yeah. in kind of bouncing onto that. So it's pretty much the same thing. Because I guess there will be a cohort out there who won't and this will all be new and technology mightn't be their thing. I guess there'll be those teething problems. It's very easy to assume everybody has all this stuff. So, But like, let's face it, like the, the, the majority of these games... Sorry, but the majority of these games are like Krasnodar versus, you know, uh, Ludigrets. So it's not as if yeah. it's your yeah. regular two points down the local kind of audience you're looking for here. There is a specific cohort that they're going after with this coverage. You're, you're, you're still getting RTE on Tuesday and I would presume another broadcaster on a Wednesday. So that's TBC the Wednesday, RTE have Tuesday and then there's BT Sport as well. I don't really think many people have BT Sport still in Ireland. Michael and Kerry says, I only downloaded it today on the back of the Champions League news. I guess that's the point. You're damn right, Michael. That is exactly the, that is the point exactly. <laughs> uh, you and thousands of others. Soccer way, who scored live score in that order for me of usage? Says Paul and Cork. Soccer way is a good man. Yeah. He says soccer way is way too many ads, but also has better stats. Great stats, yeah. Okay. Well, there we are. It's a new era. I mean, we've all this polished off. Going. We've all polished off our CVs. We're under no illusions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, but this is the way we're going. Like every, like everything will be yeah, heading yeah. in this. Pick your own poison. Uh, route whereby you can pluck whatever game you want from whatever league out of the out of the sky yeah. and watch it legally because they want to do away with the notion of illegal streams and that in one fell swoop is going to kill that in terms of Champions League coverage in this country that's true actually yeah that's death for the live streams now Champions League games overnight well just in Ireland I guess I, I'd be, I must Ireland. check if live score are dipping their toe in any it's other markets it's going to happen elsewhere yeah, it, I guess we're, we're, we're a test market we are, we are yeah. such a nice test market perfect size and like UEFA willing to allow the test to happen because you know a couple of million people not happy in Ireland not the end of the world right we should kick on with the news round it is with thanks to Gillette we don't just play the game we change it Gillette made of what matters Richie where are we starting uh, we'll start with matters in the principality but Stephen Kenny says he's determined to change the narrative around the Republic of Ireland squad this week they take on Andorra in a friendly tomorrow night followed by a game away to Hungary on Tuesday Peter's Sam Schmodix has been ruled out of both matches with a shoulder injury the majority of the squad have been together for nearly a week in Spain and Kenny told young Will there that this will hopefully work towards their advantage Thanks Kieran. Hi Stephen Hi Tony how you doing how are you? I'm good thanks yeah um, I guess before we start Seamus Coleman is out, we know that. Is anybody else injured or unavailable or doubtful? Yes, uh, Sam Smodix, um hurt his shoulder, just a previous injury that he had. He just um, come down awkwardly on, on, on his shoulder. So he's uh, it's nothing serious, but it's an injury he had earlier in the season, so that will rule him out. It sounded to me like it was Tony as opposed to young Willie was talking to there, Rich. Yeah, blame the protein team, lads. <laughs> I always blame the people behind the glass. <laughs> oh, sorry, was it the wrong clip? They haven't got microphones. Oh, yeah, right, it was, okay. yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Well, well, uh, well, with uh, absolutely no faith, you can move on to the next clip here. Go. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely with no certainty moving on to the next clip. Conor Harran saying that he wants to uh, have talks, at least with Aston Villa, after returning from his loan spell at Swansea. Uh, elsewhere in the sunshine today, the Republic of Ireland under-21s were 2-1 winners over the Australian Olympic team. A last-minute goal from Bohemians Ross Tierney, who was making his debut, gave Jim Crawford's side the victory in Marbella. They'll complete their getaway against Denmark's under-21s come this Saturday. David Nusifora, meanwhile, says it will take years for the IRFU to claw back the losses accrued during the pandemic. The high-performance director says the association is on course to lose €30 million Euro this year. That follows the €35 million Euro lost in 2020. Meanwhile, Nusifora says they wanted Tyg Furlong to sign a deal longer than a one-year deal. Tyg, I suppose, we would have liked to have contracted Tyg for, for longer than one year. Um, but that, that was his choice to be able to, to, to sit back and say, well, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the landscape will have changed in 12 months um, and uh, it'll be different. And that's his prerogative to do that. Um, and you know, we're obviously happy that he's, he's just staying on. And uh, hopefully when we go back to the, the negotiating table um, with he and other players, um, we'll be able to convince them that staying in Ireland is the best thing for, for their rugby. Um, but that's a choice that they'll, they'll all have to make. And, um, you know, all we can do is operate within uh, the financial uh, boundaries and capacity that we have. And uh, I suppose what we've always tried to do in the last five or six years is to make sure that um, we've continued to develop players so that we're... We're hopefully not overly dependent on, on on any one particular player as much as they're all important to us. But I suppose when you go back a few years and 
you look when Mike Ross was our starting tight head, you know, who would have thought we would have had two tight heads going away on a Lions tour? So, you know, player development is unbelievably important to us and it underpins a lot of what we do. But, um, you know, we're hopeful. I know the players appreciate what Irish rugby does for them, but at the end of the day, it's a decision, an individual decision that they all have to make as to where they want to play. OK, Dave News Forward there. Full press conference, I'm sure, is available on OTB Sports. The OTB apps is in your uh, app store. You can watch it all there or in any of the social media channels as well. Uh, Leon Reid, the Irish sprinter. He's denied eight charges linked to drugs and firearms offences in England. The 27-year-old appeared via video link at Bristol Crown Court along with 17 other defendants today. It's alleged that Reid knowingly permitted crack cocaine to be produced at a premises in Bath, Reid's also accused of having a Glock handgun, magazine, silencer and ammunition in his possession at the same address. He spoke only today to confirm his identity and to enter a plea of not guilty. Few texts in. I'm a Milan supporter in Dublin. Great watching Serie A matches on live score for the last couple of months and everyone I know has live score, by the way. And then John says, I would complain about having to watch football on my phone, but frankly, I work nights, so if the games are free and available on the dog and bone, I'm happy out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty cool, really, I suppose, isn't it? That uh, all these matches are suddenly available on your phone. I, I'm yeah. like, kind of just, um, for no obvious reason, just a bit suspicious of change and what's going on here, but suddenly you've been told every single Champions League match is available on your phone to stream in high quality. Mm. I guess... It's I'll, insanely I'll, I'll, convenient, Joe. I'll, which is I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll approach with that with caution, I think. But what you actually want is what we get of a uh, Tuesday, Wednesday night. Th- th- did they still do it this season? BT did the goal show um, yeah. for the group stages, especially, oh, yeah. whereby James Richardson sat down with, um, who was it, James Horncastle was in there, Julian Loren, uh, Raf Honigstein, um, one or two others maybe cycling in and out. And they just bounce around the grounds uh, as the goals go yeah. in. That's that's the, and you see the footage as opposed to say Soccer Saturday or uh, similar offer like final score say where you see actually see the goals. That like that's the ideal yeah. for that kind of night whereby you don't have to flick through sixteen matches at one time. You're just seeing what's actually being scored, much like red zone with the NFL. Yeah, and I think increasingly for probably younger people who don't want to sit through ninety minutes of a turgid, you know, group match round two necessarily. Yeah, Soccer Saturday with the footage. It's, sorry, the, the lack of three o'clock kickoffs on a Saturday have really killed Soccer Saturday, hasn't it? Like, the, there's just no, there's nothing going on at three o'clock anymore on a Saturday. To yeah, paraphrase, the best games are, yeah. yeah, the game, best games are always now on Saturday lunchtime or Sunday because of yeah. the Champions League and Europa League. Like once upon a time, at least you had one big team playing at three o'clock on a Saturday. It's now so rare that you've got any of the top six playing on a Saturday at three o'clock at all because of the way the TV rights are split. So. Yeah, I think uh, Soccer Saturday has become more of a chat show and they've gone down the lower leagues as opposed to being Premier League dominated for right. those of us who do have to sit in front of a TV on a Saturday afternoon. They've definitely uh, pivoted the format a bit in recent years. I think it'll realign a little bit more next season because with fans coming back, like the thing about the coverage over the last 18 months was essentially that they were splitting up the games to show as many as they could possibly could on TV because fans weren't allowed in stadiums. And the Premier League have said that not every game now with fans being back in stadiums is going to be available for TV. And that will see more and more of a drift back to what we had before, which would be about five or four, three o'clock kickoffs all at once. Yeah. There's still no word on when we'll find out where the 16 Wednesday night matches go, by the way. So I guess there's a bit of time to sort that out again. But uh, if you're just tuning in, RTE have the 16 matches. First pick, best games on the Tuesday night. Wednesday, there's a vacancy for a similar deal. BT still have all the matches and they'll continue to show all the matches. And then Live Score will show all 137 matches in the Champions League and you can Chromecast it onto your TV so yeah it's uh, it's very new very different so how much have you got in your back pocket Joe we can get on we can get the the other remaining 16 games on the OTB Sports app wow well, listen we should be well, in for them shouldn't we let's, let's, let's have a whip round see what we can pitch towards UEFA over the next couple of days and see if they'll agree I presume you buy them off live score now uh, I think they're two different packages are they yeah, okay. the TV package is separate to the online package they've just bought. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, like there have been a few of these. There was a, a golf major a couple of years ago that nobody had bought. And what were they called? 11 was Sports? Was the PGA Championship not briefly shown on Facebook or Twitter? Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's, what, that's what I'm mentioning. Uh, was it 11 Sports? Is that what they were called? Yeah, yeah. 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 And so they swooped in last minute and they bought the rights to the USPGA and they did a deal where like... 
if you sign up, you get the first week free. So in effect, you could get the major for free, but you had signed up for the first kind of month. And then it's fun and games trying to do, <laughs> trying to cancel that subscription. Uh, I do remember, but like the quality of the coverage was appalling. No disrespect yeah. to anyone involved. Clearly, it was appalling. Before, yeah, it was like, and I, the guy who presented it is is you is good and does a lot of European tour. But I mean, he was like. He was in like a local radio type studio with a kind of plastic sign behind him that kind of nailed against the foam. And it was like one camera that you'd get like, you know, it was like a webcam and it was back to him in studio for chats and just, you know, terrible. So I presume we'll be getting a bit better than that. Uh, Let's race through the last couple of stories. Yeah, Mary Fitzgerald secured Ireland's second medal in as many days at the European Para Athletics Championships. She claimed bronze today in the F40 shot put in Poland. It follows Greta Striemakita's gold in the 1500 metres T13 last night. Ireland fell agonisingly short in their first one-day international with the Netherlands today. Set a target of 196 in Utrecht. Ireland lost by a single run. They ended their 50 overs on 194 for nine and the sides will meet again on Friday. Uh, Serena Williams in second round action at the French Open this evening, or at least she was. Uh, she has beaten her opponent, uh, Mihaela Berzanescu of Romania, in three sets, forced to a deciding set. She'll face Danielle Collins in the next round. Elsewhere, on the Suzanne Longlen court, the third seed, Arina Sabalenka, is up against her fellow Belarusian, uh, Sasnovic. And Sabalenka has claimed the first set of that match, 7-5, and is leading 4-3, going with serve uh, in the second. Belinda Bencic, the 10th seed, uh, beaten today by the Russian Daria Kazakina. No such problems for former finalist Victoria Azarenka, who set up a third-round contest with Madison Keys by beating Clara Tawson, 7-5, 6-4. Men's fifth seed, Stefanos Tsitsipas, beat Pedro Martinez in straight sets. He'll face John Isner in round three. Sixth seed, Alex Zverev, a straight sets winner today over the Russian qualifier, Roman Sufian, while former world number four Kane Ishikori beat Karen Kashinov in five 11 seed Roberto Bautista Agut is out though beaten by the Swiss qualifier Henry Loxanen who will play Nishikori in round three still to come tonight Daniel Medvedev the second seed goes up against Tommy Paul uh, Rory McIlroy yeah he has decided to pull out of the Pro-Am and cancel his press conference out of the memorial golf event at Muirfield Village this week he cited personal reasons for not being able to fulfil his media duties okay but playing in the tournament, is he? Still set to play in the tournament. No word okay. on a withdrawal just yet. I'll keep an eye on that one for everybody tonight. And if there is any update, uh, you'll find it on the OTB Sports app. Okay. Antonio Conte. Looks like he's back, baby. He's reportedly in talks with Tottenham regarding their managerial vacancy. The Italian left Inter last week, days after guiding them to a first Serie A title in 11 years. Conte led Chelsea to the Premier League title in 2017 in his first season at the Premier League club. Spurs without a manager following the sacking of Jose Mourinho in April. Conte could arrive as a combo package with the now former chief football officer at Juventus, Fabio Paratici, who's been separately approached by Spurs for a director of football role at the club. Now, this is interesting. This might give Harry Kane pause for thought. Like Conte coming in, I presume Daniel Levy is going in with his eyes open here. He is hiring a tough person to manage, but like a serial winner. So that could be very, very interesting. Potential powder keg though as well, given that he's just walked away from the Serie A champions because they want to sell their three best players. Like if Spurs decide to do what they've done in recent years and, you know, sell players to try and reinvest back in the squad, Conte will not be in North London for too long. No. And like, we haven't got the full story of Mourinho yet. I know that there's so much going on, but I mean, they did sack Mourinho five days out from a cup final. Like that did not end well. Something went badly wrong there, as many people predicted it would. I mean, you would predict the Conte-Levy situation will not be a good relationship because... I think on the Mourinho front, there was a contractual uh, situation whereby if he did win a trophy, then there would have been another clause uh, triggered in his contract, which would essentially have cost Daniel Levy more money than he was probably willing to pay. Uh, the Portuguese uh, so uh, and I think they did everything they could to I guess facilitate because he was placed on garden leave essentially I think they facilitated mm-hmm. his move to Roma subsequently too so they're winning the as as perverse as it sounds winning the Carabao Cup wouldn't have suited Tottenham's owners as regards Mourinho being shuffled out of the club because I think they're probably intending to get rid of him in the summer anyway yeah. um, but the uh, the Conte situation is interesting I spoke to Martin Lipton about the potential arrival actually uh, last week of Conte I was asking, would they take the combo package seen as Inter are looking to cut the fat at the San Siro this week or this summer? Would Spurs fans take Conte and Romelu Lukaku as a combo package uh, if Harry Kane is heading out the door? You know, given that Kane looks like he's going to go anyway, it would make it a bit more palatable. I presume their first choice would be keep Kane and get another manager, but it's yeah. it's not a bad consolation. Like, Conte is serious. 
So that's very interesting. And then it seems uh, Everton are looking at Nuno. Yeah, he's set to open talks, it seems at least anyway, with Everton regarding their vacancy, the former Wolves boss, one of the contenders to succeed Carlo Ancelotti at Goodison Park. Conte and former Everton boss David Moyes are other names who have been linked with Everton. And we have to mention Wes as well before we shoot off. Yeah. Wes Hulhan has signed a new one-year deal with Cambridge United. The 39-year-old healthy use gained automatic promotion last season to League One. He's back for another year. Yeah, it's amazing. If you're wondering why we haven't interviewed him, it's because he has no interest in being interviewed. But we uh, love him all the same. <laughs> we love him all the same. So that makes him all the better. Yeah, it does it's in some ways. That air of mystery. Yeah. It's like Wes, will you come on the show and just talk about how great this is? No. Uh, not, well, we'll try again. We'll try again. Joe, so, I interviewed him two years ago today. Yeah. And he said at that point there was no way he was going to play football again, and he ended up in Australia. I think about three weeks later. Right. So I think he was he was ready for coaching at that stage. So it's great to see him actually come back. That was literally this day in 2019. And then had his spell, got injured. I thought at that point he was definitely going to retire. was surprised that he rocked up at Cambridge. But he was just walking around and uh, doing his thing last season. And I think he can still be an important player for them in League One next year. And remarkable to think this is going to be his 21st year as a senior professional footballer. Yeah, pretty amazing. All right, fellas. Richie, Will, thanks so much for that. Cheers, lads. Cheers, lads. We have Tom English on the way after 8 o'clock talking about his new book about the Lions 97 tour. Loads of good stuff in that. I know it's kind of a well excavated, maybe overexposed tour, but there's some good stuff in that book. More on the South African side of things. So that's on the way after 8. We'll have David Snade with us on the football after 9. Coming up next, NBA playoffs are on at the moment and progressing a few contentious bits and bobs going on. So we'll check in on what's going on over stateside. I was so pleased to just be there and be playing at Augusta. Everybody understands. There is silence. Hearts stop. Hearts stop beating. Arnold now, a side hill 20-footer.